Westminster Confession, chapter one, paragraph five. And in this paragraph, we're continuing our discussion about how can we be confident that the Bible is indeed the Word of God. In the last video, we saw that the ultimate authority that confirms to us uh, the divine inspiration of the Bible is the Bible itself. But this paragraph tells us that there are uh, other ways that God assures us and confirms to us that the Bible is the Word of God. And those three ways are the church, the beauty of the Bible itself, and the Holy Spirit. So we're going to talk about each of those today. Chapter 1, paragraph five, paragraph 5, this is what it says. We may be moved and induced by the testimony of the church to an high and reverent esteem of the Holy Scriptures. So one of the things this is saying is that part of the reason that we can be confident in the Bible is also that even though the Bible says it is the Word of God, we would expect that God's people would recognize God's Word as such. And in fact, we do see that. So even though it is true that at various stages in the history of the church, the church did confirm that the 66 books of the Bible are indeed the Word of God. It's not the ultimate authority, but it is a secondary confirmation of what the Bible itself says. So I for us, we come to the church and we learn from the church. We learn from our pastors and we learn from our denomination and our church history. And so we gain a deeper confidence that the Bible is the word of God. But there's more. And the heavenliness of the matter, the efficacy of the doctrine, the majesty of the style. So what this is saying is that the Bible is an amazing book. And because of that, um, God's people have always been drawn to it. So, for example, if you look at uh, some of the ancient manuscripts that we have, uh, there were other Gospels that were written in the early centuries of the church. One was the Gospel of Thomas that was a very early extra-biblical Gospel. And yet, if you look at the manuscripts, we find that we have far more copies of the Gospel of John than we do of the Gospel of Thomas. Why is that? It's probably because people liked the Gospel of John better. It spoke to them more deeply. And so they recognized that these weren't just the words of men. These are the words of God. This is divinely inspired. And so, you know, it's just like the, the Western canon of literature. You know, there are all these books that, that uh, literature departments recognize as the Western canon. And the reason they recognize these special books in, in uh, uh, w the Western tradition is because those books had a particular power to them. And the scriptures have a power to them. I know for me, I read the Bible as a, as a 16 year old for the first time, I'd never been to church and they, they just opened my eyes and opened my imagination, transformed my life. So there's a beauty to the Bible, but there's even more. It says the scope of the whole, which is to give all glory to God, the full discovery of it makes of uh, the only way of man's salvation, the many other incomparable excellencies, and the entire perfection thereof. And some of you have probably thought about this, that the Bible is written by at least 40 different authors over a 1,500-year period. It was written in three different continents, in, in Africa, in Asia, and Europe. And yet somehow all these authors in different cultures, in different centuries writing, are able to write a unified story. And this whole Bible of 66 uh, books fits together perfectly and majestically. What that tells us is that this book does not have a human author. It has divine authorship. The Holy Spirit has been orchestrating the writing of the scripture throughout history. So that too confirms to us, this must be the word of God. And so these are arguments whereby it doth abundantly evidence itself to be the word of God. Yet, Notwithstanding our full persuasion and assurance of the infallible truth and divine authority thereof is from the inward work of the Holy Spirit bearing witness by and with the word 
in our hearts. Now you see that pairing of the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, and you'll find that throughout the Westminster Confession, that the Spirit and the Word work in concert with one another. And one of the things that this is telling us is that the real reason that we tend to not believe that the Bible is the Word of God is because our hearts ultimately do not trust God. We do not trust that He's trustworthy. We don't trust that He's good. We don't trust that He wants us to know Him. And so it's the cynical spirit of our heart that keeps us from receiving God's Word. And so that's why Confession says that ultimately for us to have assurance and to be persuaded, we need the inner working of the Holy Spirit to accompany our reading of the Word. And so these three things, the church, the beauty of the Bible itself, and the Holy Spirit work together to uh, give us a confidence that the Bible is indeed the Word of God. So now a question for you to discuss. When we have doubts, how can the church, the beauty of the Bible, and the Holy Spirit each be a help to us?